Hello, hello, hello. Greetings, child of God. It's always such a delight to come to your screen and just to be able to have conversations that are edifying, that help us in, in our day-to-day -day life journeys and just to inspire one another to just be God's uh, design to just walk this life the way God wants us to. And uh, in the past few weeks, we have been journeying and looking at the portrait of Sarah. And it has been an interesting journey because uh, most of us, we find ourselves in the space of wait, you know, that space of wait, waiting on the Lord for something. It could be waiting upon the Lord for a job, waiting upon the Lord for the growth of your business waiting upon the Lord for your marriage, waiting upon the Lord for, uh, for that child that you long to have or to hold in your hands. And it's been a season of waiting. And sometimes we saw in the past uh, uh, episodes that while waiting, sometimes we find like God is tarrying, like God is taking too long and we find ourselves in situations where we are trying to help God in our own way. And then we meet obstacles and then we meet uh, disappointments and then we meet uh, uh, strife and we, and, and, and we alter the course of, of the way that God has designed for us to walk in. But we also saw what should we do while in the waiting period? What should we do in the waiting period? And we said we feed from the word of God because that which God has spoken upon your life, he will follow through to perform it. And what a better way than to feed your faith, to feed that, that seed with the word of God continually, to surround yourself with people that are connected and are anchored into the word of God. And therefore, we just want to bring it home where we say, finally, brethren. Mm -hmm. And uh, with me uh, to do this is Pastor Miriam. Pastor Miriam, karibu, karibu sana. It's always such an encouragement to just have you mm -hmm. here. Yeah. As we dissect the word of God, as we look at these different portraits mm. of these characters that we look up to and we draw lessons from. And therefore we we have journeyed with this word and the, 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 the story of Sarah. We have seen her origin, we have seen her marriage, we have seen uh uh, spaces where she 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 was bearing the pain of being uh, sold out to be uh, to be with the king while to save Abraham's life. We have seen as she has waited to hold a child because her introduction actually mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning is Sarai, the wife of Abraham, who was barren. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, when you are branded like that, I cannot imagine the pain of the waiting period and getting to a point where you're thinking, God, you've taken too long. Can I try this? Can I, can I maybe do this? Maybe this will quicken the process. And we come to see how that created a, a strife and, uh, you know, almost altering the course of God, but God is a God who is faithful and God is God. Mm. And when he says something, when he has set something in, in course, no matter what you do to divert from that course, he will always call you back to, 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 to the right point where now you, you begin the journey again. So um, let's, let's bring it home. Finally. Finally. <laughs> well, finally, it's like um, we've seen the journey mm -hmm. that Sarai had. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we saw the surrogacy mm -hmm. and uh, she's still Sarai and the husband is still Abram. Mm -hmm. But after the bearing of Ishmael, now God sees uh, these people need to, to be woken up from some slum. Mm. And he comes in and asks Abraham for a sacrifice, for mm. a covenant mm. in Genesis 17. Mm. And at that point where he visits Abraham, 
then he speaks to him and tells him your name shall no longer be Abram but Abraham mm. you know Abram was just a high father or exalted father with mm. nothing to show mm. but now he tells him you're going to be a father of multitudes mm-hmm. and you're going to be a father of nations mm. then he comes and says your wife is no longer going to be contention or mm. strife mm. we are going to call her queen or princess mm. that is to mean she has been parting with these big people mm-hmm. although there is nothing to show we now need to show that say it's something that can come out of her even though she has gone past the child bearing age mm-hmm. and so god spoke to abram and told him your abraham and your wife is no longer sarai and we have a new covenant a blood covenant was initiated mm-hmm. and god came through and gave promise re restated the promise like mm. uh, reminded abram what abraham what he had already said mm. and so we also see the visiting of the three men mm. and then sarah is told next year like now okay. you'll have a child mm. and she laughs and she's like oh a woman like me really mm. i have tried all the doctors mm. i have tried everything i could but it did not work i even tried to bring in my maid servant mm. and then it did not really come out as i thought it would i was thinking like i'm playing the games we used to play with my husband when we were in egypt mm. where he would give me into the king and then maybe i would come out with something mm. those are some games that are played in the world mm. people can exchange anything for for any value mm. and so we see that finally god visited abraham and Sarah and what he had promised did good mm. he came and stamped the promise and mm. Sarah was able to conceive mm. and i think there are so many of us who need a name change mm. we've had what people have called us and it's like it's our label it's our brand and everybody would say that is who we are yes but somehow we would need to get to the point where we hear God saying move out of this now i'm mm. giving you a turn around mm. i'm changing your dressing i'm mm. changing the name i'm locating i'm relocating you mm. by virtue of giving you a new name mm. and erasing everything that people knew it's like mm. the command in computer where you delete and yes, insert yes, something yes. you replace mm. you synchronize mm. you you want systems to be compatible to what god has said mm. and you realize that this thing that this name this business name that we have given this business for ages mm. needs to be removed, removed and yeah. then we put a new or this branding we did mm. when we began business and we said we were going to do well mm. needs to be replaced Mm -hmm. there are moments in life when things must change you know like we say in in our learned cycles that you cannot just do the same thing the same way and expect different different results Mm -hmm. there has to be an introduction of something that now allows someone to finally say wow we have come to it we have gotten what it is and so the changing of names we see god doing and then telling it's like telling them i you've been dwelling on mount sinai for too long mm. you need to relocate to a new place and to relocate you need a passport or you need this and this documentation and if you go by this name they will not accept you yes. you must have another name let's add you another name that when they code it in it will accept access it will help you access and that is what god finally has done for sarah mm. and so we see that after the celebration with the three men you know like the trinity came household full yes. to their home mm. and sarah is so used now to staying alone in there mm. after all the shaming you know like she thought when i give out my my husband to this house housemaid or yes. let's call her my servant mm. and it's going to be like this child is going to be my own child yes. but there were boundaries were that were not well spelt mm. and so i see sarah getting 
folded in there and mm. in what we say in Kiswahili kunji kunja mm. and she is like even when visitors are coming she is that woman who will always be told by her husband please do and do and do mm. and of course the culture that was she had grown up in even in marriage mm. was that culture where the man has his place as his tent and the woman has their own place it's, it's not the mingling we are doing every now and then even in our kikuyu culture that's how things were initially mm. that men had their own vingiras and the wife, wives had their own houses yes. where where they would stay and would only visit the man yeah. upon mm. upon Being invitation upon, yeah. and so we are seeing sara is in her tent doing her things and when the the angel speaks and says tomorrow we are coming back or the man says we are coming back not tomorrow but next year and you shall be having a child she just laughs you know there are so many of us who have laughed at our situations yeah. yet god was working something mm. we have become so familiar with our situation such that even when somebody else suggests that there is going to be change we are the one who wants what are the change that god is working down because we have been so 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 oriented so used until it's like things can never work any other way mm. you have been to places where people will always tell you oh things are done this way here you try to suggest a new way of doing things they're like hey ages from ages from ages it will work it won't work we have not had it been mm. done another way mm. and if you ask them but how we found it being done this way mm. simply because culturally something doesn't want us to go to the heights mm. doesn't want us to 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 achieve and so we find sara must have been in that situation mm. and maybe a lot of other women around her were like her mm. but they did not have the word of god but this woman this young lady mm. had the word of god yeah. and so we can say finally be brethren be strong mm -hmm. in the power and the might of the lord who gave you the word yes. when he has spoken it doesn't matter who else is speaking he has said it he will do it and that is the biggest challenge we want to leave the woman with mm -hmm. as we come to the close of this portrait of yes. our mother yes. sara yes. you remember that she is recorded in first peter mm -hmm. as having been submissive to her husband yes. and being a portrait for many other women to learn from mm -hmm. so apart from that she went through challenges and life wasn't easy for her but there are lessons that all of us can take she's recorded to be our mother because she submitted to the husband that submission that she followed abraham wherever he went and did not feel like oh i need this or that even those agreements that they signed you know some of them gave abraham wealth mm -hmm. yes a wealth transfer like when you read the bible and it says the wealth of the wicked shall be transferred to the righteous mm -hmm. you will find that that was one benefit that abraham got for from her having Sarah is the wife mm. she may have been misused but at the end of the day the lord came in and wiped her tears though he only gave her this one child but Isaac is a power to reckon with because out of Isaac we have Israel yes. and out of Israel we have so much that has come the 12 tribes of of yes. of Israel Absolutely. and we have seen the wisdom which this nation has mm -hmm. how the world has tried to fight her mm -hmm. but cannot be able mm -hmm. but look at Sarah or Sarah she bore a lot of let me call them tribulations you cannot imagine what pressure she went through but even though she went through pressure mm -hmm. imagine even i'm just looking at the scenario where you have taken your servant given her to your husband mm. and then it's like you are nowhere to be seen no records of mm. you having ever existed yes. it's like a, a swipe of the mind on abraham's side took place because mm. you remember how the bible says that she, that sarah became despised yes. in the presence of mm. and then the bible says oh sarah dealt so harshly with this girl until she had to get off mm -hmm. and run for her safety mm -hmm. and then she comes back and bears a son and just when she's raising the son and it's like uh, 
It's like uh, the boy is turning the age of teenage. Mm. God says, circumcise every male in your house. My goodness. Mm. Look at Sarah there, looking and seeing this whole deal happening. But that, she has something to celebrate because God is asking for another covenant, yes. a blood covenant, yes. removing the foreskin mm. and saying, become new. Men around here need to become new and get sensible through that process. And so after winning, after she wind her son, you can imagine Ishmael is grown around that thing yes. and he can now start mimicking yes. or he can start yes. yelling, mm. he can start snobbing, mm. he can do anything, mm. he can bad mouth mm. Isaac. Mm. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at the arrogance of Egypt mm. and, the arrog and the pride of the world that will always want to show the woman of God that you don't deserve it. I went before you. Yes, I am younger, but I have the power. And the master is looking at me with favor. That is what she, maybe Aga is telling Sarai. Yes, yeah. But now, bless the Lord, because the child of promise has arrived. And because it's like uh, Abraham is still snoring and trying to look at uh, Ishmael as the son of promise. Mm. And God has to intervene and favor Sarah. Because at some point after the cele winning celebration, when you know like this boy is being separated from the mother, mm. he has to stop sucking and all those things. And then Sarah is advising Abraham and telling him, this round is telling him, chase uh, remove this girl from our compound yes. together with the child. the child because somehow mm. the son of promise mm. cannot have space to play it's true. cannot have space to ride his bicycle mm. cannot have space to wear his good shoes and mm. feel good and have enjoy his pizza mm. because this other one is always telling him you think you have anything here mm. i have everything but god has worked out. You know what the Bible says, God glorifies himself when in both good and bad things. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at what happens to Ahaga in the end, it is not really a good thing. But space had to be created, safe space mm -hmm. had to be created for, for the son of promise, is known Isaac, the laughter boy, to be brought to be, to have operations that would help him grow mm. and understand who he is. Yes. And then know that he has a promise from God mm. that he would be a father of nations as well as his father had been promised. So what I want to encourage someone is, you may have submitted and felt like you are torn. Like what the Bible says in, um, in 2 Corinthians 4, mm. that we have been trodden on, yes. we have been tossed on our sides, we are looking for places where we can come out. Mm. But somehow God still makes a way. Yes. He will open a door where you did not think. He may blow the ceiling for you to go out. Mm. He may just let you know what to do, like mm. for Sarah. Sarah submitted and Sarah's submission bore fruit yes. in the long run. And that's what we are saying finally. Sarai became the queen that we will always remember as our yes. mother. She became the mother of nations, mm. though she may have passed through a lot of bitterness. Mm. You know, Sarah, the beautiful wife of Abraham, had been barren. This condition was like a curse in their place. But regardless of having been cursed, when God came through for her and said, you're no longer Sarai, mm -hmm. you're no longer the cursed one, you are no longer contention and strife. Mm -hmm. I want to make you elevated mm -hmm. and sit you with kings mm -hmm. and give you a song and a new celebration. You'll find that in Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, mm -hmm. it talks about her, how even be beyond the age of childbearing, mm -hmm. finally, God opened her womb and blessed her with a son of remembrance. Yes. So my friends, when we are submitted to God, we can come to a point where we think we've been too, through too much, that nothing can come out of us. Mm. But God is not yet done. It is not over until he says it is over. Mm. And I want to encourage someone that because of Sarah, mm. today a woman can stand and say, my God lives. Yes. 
And you can still say, I'll face tomorrow. tomorrow. And all fear is gone. Mm -hmm. Because he has not done over. He's not overdone with you. You may be thinking that they have said so much about you yes. until you want to agree with them. Mm -hmm. Like Sarah at some point agreed with them mm -hmm. and decided to do the surrogate way. Yes. You may feel like you don't deserve anything mm -hmm. and then you want to give it all out there because you are not worth it. But I want to challenge somebody and encourage them to hold on to the voice they first had, mm -hmm. to remember that going down to Egypt doesn't have an answer. Yes. That you only build strife and contention yes. until you submit everything to God. Yes. And then you hear the voice of God again. Because I see the visitation of the three men, like it is God who is coming now and saying, now we need to show up and let Sarah here, yes. what we always told the husband. Mm. We need to appear in person there and make her know that we are mean we mean what we say. Mm. You know, like we would say Kusema na kutenda. So God is still working. And there are times God will speak to us and speak and speak and then decide to do a sign so that we can understand that He is speaking. Mm. And my friend, you who has issues a conflict because of the matters of your marriage. Mm. You have a conflict with someone you brought in to help you yes. when you thought things were too hard mm. and you do not know how to get them out. Mm. You may have prayed, you may have spoken about it, mm -hmm. but I want to tell you, finally, God will come through yes. and he will speak audibly yes. like he did in the issue of Abraham and Sarah when he said, get this woman out, mm. let her go together with her son, yes. because this is not the son of promise. God is working to clear all the messes that you have done on the basis of you allowing him to, and saying, finally, God, I allow you to be the one ruling over my life. And finally, God, I say yes to the word you spoke, because you have never spoken a lie. And finally, I say yes, though I laughed at what you said, I choose to believe. Because this is a journey of faith. Mm. This faith, journey of faith has challenges like we saw earlier. Mm. But God keeps reminding us that he is the one showing us the way. Mm. And so if the way is so dark, refer to him. Ask him who is the light of men to come and light your path. Mm. Ask him to come and abide. Come and dwell. Give him a dwelling place. Remember that visitation by three men when whom did who had not had not said we are coming, mm. who had not given a notice. Who messengers mm. from heaven. Yeah, who had not booked an appointment. Mm. We need to allow them to come without an appointment. Mm. In fact, we don't have to give God appointments in our lives mm. if our life has to has to has to go through mm. or has to flow in the direction He has appointed. Mm. So, like Sarai, when she had of visitors, she ran. She did flour, she baked cakes immediately without having to ask, had they booked an appointment? Mm -hmm. And it's like now we see an opening for God, finally. Mm -hmm. She's broken to beyond repair. She's almost at the verge of giving up. Years have caught up with her. She's almost clocking a hundred. And 25 years ago, God had said, I'm going to bless you people. So when we are at the verge of giving up, finally, when we are saying, ah, it's over, yeah. God comes in and brings the results to be. Yeah. And so she was able to see, and she said, whoever will hear this news, they will laugh. Yeah. And so Isaac, laughter yes. Yes. has become. Yes. You may have cried for more than 20 years. Mm. Don't you worry. Your God is watching. When he comes, we shall all join in laughter and in celebration. Mm. Shalom. May we hold on to the promises of the Lord who keeps his promise. God bless you. Amen, amen. Mm. Thank you so much, Pastor Miriam. That was, uh, it was just so encouraging and so powerful. Sometimes people think that uh, we do this for them and uh, it turns out while we are still doing it, some God is speaking about a situation mm. in our own very life. And mm. therefore, we are in this journey uh, together and therefore, 
it is an encouragement to all of us to keep on holding on to the one who puts us together, to the one who holds our destiny, to the mm. one who knows our tomorrow. Because he never fails. He never fails. It may have taken months, it may have taken weeks, it may have taken days where you needed it right away. It may have taken years. But God in his own time will make everything beautiful. And just to say this, because we have just been, um, we're just coming from a month where we were doing, we were celebrating the mental wellness and the health uh, 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 around the globe. And it has been a time or we have had a season where we've had people doing some crazy, crazy stuff because they are tired. They are tired of their situations. They are tired of their predicaments. They are tired. And the only way out, they feel they are fixed into a corner. They feel they are fixed into a space where they cannot breathe. And they give up. Because they have looked on upon men and they have failed them. They have looked upon uh, companies or money or they paid their faith upon something that really failed them. Mm. Or they had an idea of, of how uh, someone was going to come and, and whisk them and rescue them, but they failed. How about shifting focus to the one who never fails? How about shifting focus to the one who loves you so much to the details that he knows the count of the hair? on your head. Mm -hmm. The one who calls you an apple of my eye. The one who you can talk to anytime. The one who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus loves you. Our Father God loves you. In that situation a lot of people have been going through dark times in their relationships. Dark times at their workplaces. Dark times in their marriages. Dark times because their children have been lost into drug abuse, into, into uh, substance abuse. A lot of people are going through stuff. Abuse, molestation, uh, things that are just overwhelming. When you feel overwhelmed, look unto God because he will come through. As you wait upon the Lord, may he give you strength. May he continue to give you strength because he is going to come through for you. And therefore, let us encourage one another. Write to us. Share your comments with us. Reach out to us. If you need, you are in, in, a, in a space where you need to talk with someone, you need someone to pray with you, we are here. We have a whole team that is waiting just to pray together with you. We have a whole team that is waiting just to journey with you and to connect you to the help that will never fail. May God bless you. May God keep on strengthening you. And we love you from Deborah Generation Show. Until next time. See you then. Amen.